It is not we who choose to awaken ourselves, but God who chooses to awaken us. Contemplation is not trance or ecstasy, nor the hearing of sudden, unalterable words, nor the imagination of lights. It is not the emotional fire and sweetness that come from religious exaltation. It is not enthusiasm, the sense of being seized by an elemental force and swept into liberation by mystical frenzy. These things may seem to be in some way like a contemplative awakening, insofar as they suspend the ordinary awareness and control exercised by our empirical self. But they are not the work of the deep self, only of the emotions of the somatic unconscious. They are a flooding up of the Dionysian forces of the id. Such manifestations can, of course, accompany a deep and genuine religious experience, but they are not what I am talking about here as contemplation. Nor is contemplation the gift of prophecy, nor does it imply the ability to read the secrets of men's hearts. These things can sometimes go along with contemplation, but they are not essential to it, and it would be erroneous to confuse them with it. There are many other escapes from the empirical external self, which might seem to be but are not contemplation. For instance, the experience of being seized and taken out of oneself by collective enthusiasm, in a totalitarian parade, the self-righteous upsurge of party loyalty that blots out conscience and absolves every criminal tendency in the name of class, nation, party, race, or sect, the danger and the attraction of these false mystiques of nation and of class is precisely that they seduce and pretend to satisfy those who are no longer aware of any deep or genuine spiritual need. The false mysticism of the mass society captivates men who are so alienated from themselves and from God that they are no longer capable of genuine spiritual experience. Yet it is precisely these ersatz forms of enthusiasm that are opium for the people, deadening their awareness of their deepest and most personal needs, alienating them from their true selves, putting conscience and personality to sleep, and turning free, reasonable men into passive instruments of the power politician. Let no one hope to find in contemplation an escape from conflict, from anguish, or from doubt. On the contrary, the deep, inexpressible certitude of the contemplative experience awakens a tragic anguish and opens many questions in the depths of the heart like wounds that cannot stop bleeding. For every gain in deep certitude, there is a corresponding growth of superficial doubt. This doubt is by no means opposed to genuine faith but it mercilessly examines and questions the spurious faith of everyday life, the human faith which is nothing but the passive acceptance of conventional opinion. This false faith, which is what we often live by, and which we even come to confuse with our religion, is subjected to inexorable questioning. This torment is a kind of trial by fire in which we are compelled by the very light of invisible truth which has reached us in the dark ray of contemplation, to examine, to doubt, and finally to reject all the prejudices and conventions that we have hitherto accepted as if they were dogmas.